everyone welcome back to the channel so i'm so happy to be back filming i've had a horrible two weeks i've had the worst cold i've probably had in about three years honestly normally i just get a little bit of a tickly cough or nothing too bad you know a little bit of a scratchy throat but full blown oh i felt awful felt awful my voice totally went so i couldn't do any filming so we're back today with another color along in johanna basford's small victories someone's requested another color along in this book and I will kindly oblige because I absolutely love this book. So I've been dying to get back into it. So if you haven't already seen up on the channel, the last colour along that I did do in this one was the fruits. So each one of those individual fruits is a tutorial up on my channel. And you'll find it under playlists that says Johanna Basford Small Victories. Um, I'll also link that playlist in the description of this video. But today I thought we'd do this one. I was you know flicking through all the pages and i thought i've not really seen anyone color this page yet and it, i was really drawn to it <clears throat> i have to apologize there is still a bit of a frog in my throat not not a real one but <laughs> so this is the snail which we're going to do today and then i think i'm going to do this as a bee i think you could do it as a bee a butterfly a moth whatever you want but i think i'm going to do that one as a bee when it comes to it but today we're going to do the snail so i'm going to get right down here as far as i can and i have picked out some pencils and as always i think i'm gonna do polychromos throughout this book so any color alongs i do in here i think i'll probably do with them with the polys they work really nice in this book and i don't want to risk using anything else where it might not work as well so i've been really enjoying using these colored pencils so first off i think we're gonna tackle the little bits down here right at the bottom of the snail and i've picked out sanguine for this 188 my belly's rumbling sanguine 188 and i thought we could make it simple and just use this one color but using various pressures to give it a different you know tone so light layer firstly and we're just going to go over all of these little bits because I think sometimes you can open your pencil case and you pick you can pick out loads of colours and it's just too much. There's already a lot going on um in this area. So I don't want to bring in, you know, lots and lots of colours. So if we go in with a very light layer of this, then we can go in with a medium pressure or a hard pressure and you know build on that colour in the areas where we want it a bit darker. <clears throat> but yeah i've missed coming on it's felt weird not doing any editing or <laughs> uploading to youtube <clears throat> after that busy week that i had with doing the tutorials for the fruit so yeah now i'm going to do a hard pressure and i think i'm going to do it where should we do dark to light from the bottom oh yeah i think we'll do the darkest bit at the bottom <laughs> i'm so indecisive i'm like should i do it at the bottom yeah so we'll go in on a medium pressure and we'll just drag that color up a little bit but still leaving the top bit lighter so because these illustrations are so tiny you're gonna have to be super careful make sure your pencil is really sharp and don't get too carried away because that's my usual trick he's getting too carried away and then not leaving any of the space at the top for the light a bit now i hope you can see what i'm doing i would can you see there where i've left the top bit very light now you can even leave it like that as well without burnishing it so you've got a sort of textured look or you can go in with favorite burnisher pencil on the top bit um you know what i might leave it a bit textured on this one I do tend to burnish everything, but I'm thinking I might leave this one textured. I think it might look quite nice. What do you prefer to do? Do you burnish everything you do or do you not? I know a lot of people don't and you can, you can, that's how you can spot people's styles. And there is someone on Instagram who you can see puts a lot of texture into their colorings and it, they look absolutely gorgeous. But I seem to be too compelled to get that burnisher out all the time. Because there's something in my brain that says it's not finished unless it's burnished. But I love the texture. Same with when I'm doing paintings. I love 
getting a bit of texture in there or a bit of different sort of you know what I mean now because I'm so zoomed in now I've got to be careful that I'm not going to go off camera here I'm just gradually moving it up and hopefully we can get this done in an hour because I can only film for an hour as you know my phone storage is rubbish and I can only do sort of an hour's worth of filming I'm hoping to be able to get this done but knowing me with my slow colouring there's a chance we might have to do it in two parts but don't fret if I do I'll be filming tomorrow as well so if I only get half of this done I will film the second half tomorrow so it won't be long you won't have to wait long for it to go up so now we're going to do the same thing on these bits here as well so higher pressure at the bottom and leaving it lighter at the top hope my big hand isn't in the way I'm expecting a lot of parcels as well, so if my doorbell starts, you know, going off on fire, <laughs> I keep up it good to the door. Christmas in how many days is it? Is it about two weeks now? Something like that. So that's the bottom bit of the snail, and then I've picked out two other colours for the big chunky bit under here. So we're going to go with making it darker on the top bit. So I'm going to go in with this Caput Mortem 169, is that? It's hard to read that foiling sometimes. 169 Caput Mortem. I am just going to zoom us out a bit now because I will end up going off the, off the screen. So I'm going to start at the top with this colour and I'm just mapping out where I want it for now. I'm not going in with that hard pressure yet, but I will be doing eventually. But I'm just dra dragging the colour down and leaving a little section underneath for now just so we can work out where we want our colours I so keep these illustrations on there there was something about this snail I thought I don't like snails you know <laughs> in the garden but I like drawings of snails I don't know what it is I don't like actual snails because they're all slimy in the I love drawings of them like this. It's quite pretty. Oh, watch! Did anyone watch the final of I'm a Celebrity to Get Me Out of Here last night? If you're in the UK, that was so fun. Such a fun series. Everyone's been like all the people on it have been really lovely. I think. But I did notice um, at the final show, they bring back all the past celebrities who's been voted off or who's, who's left normally. And the two that walked out wasn't there, I noticed. One of them being Jamie Lynn Spears. She didn't rock up to the party. <laughs> she might have gone to the after show, but she wasn't at the actual final TV thing. <clears throat> there so i've mapped out that now and i'm going to go in with my other color that i've got for just underneath so the other color i've picked out is bista 179 so i'm going to bring that up from this side and these colors are going to merge quite nicely they're not too dissimilar from each other i don't think let me bring me around I'm going to bring this from the bottom up to the top and then we're going to deepen up that cap up mortem when I know I've got this colour down where I want it. So he's looking forward to Christmas. What are you all doing? <laughs> we do the same thing every year. Because obviously I've got five children. So we just cater for ourselves really. Um family come round in the morning and we exchange all our gifts but then we all tend to do our own thing so obviously with there being seven of us five kids and then me and rob we just do our own dinner because can you imagine if we invited ourselves round to anybody else's house and, we, and they had to cook for seven of us 
the seven of us they'd be having kittens my mum certainly wouldn't her house is tiny her house is a little two bedroom house she's not got a dining room or anything she's just got the ti a tiny little living room so that'd be an all go <laughs> so yeah i'll do the christmas dinner for the kids and my partner and that's it really it's a bit of a quiet one apart from the morning when family comes around to exchange gifts it's a bit of a quiet one which is quite nice because i think it can already be you know it can already be too hectic with all the kids and the toys because normally on christmas day we've got about three of them asking us to build things <laughs> we're like ah You'll have to hang on a minute. Because they've asked for Lego. Oh, Lego, man. I hate Lego. I can't bear Lego. Right, going back in with Caput Mortem now, 169, we're going to really go in with a hard pressure and get this colour on the top there. Yeah, last year one of my daughters asked for the Encanto Lego house. And I got it and I thought, because it said something like age six plus on the thing. And I thought, oh, that'll be all right. She didn't have a clue how to build it. So I had to build it. And I lost my patience. Let me tell you, I'm not one for building Lego. I don't know why people could sit there for hours building Lego. Because literally, I did not have the patience for that. I'm not about Lego. Let's just put it that way. I've seen a really nice... Um, artist piece in lego and it's like framed i forgot the artist now is it who who did you see something it's like a wave and they've got it in lego and i think oh that'd be so cool but i ain't building it <laughs> i ain't building it no chance what what christmas movies are your favorites I think in our house it's definitely Home Alone, like that movie, Home Alone 1 and 2, um, definitely favourites in our house, they get put on repeat and just at the minute my daughter has suddenly got an obsession with the movie Jingle All The Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. <laughs> I have to say I'm not keen on Arnold Schwarzenegger as an actor, I don't know what it is, I just don't. I just don't connect with him as an actor. I prefer um, Sylvester Stallone. But it's the same with... Oh, is that of one I don't like as well? Oh, what's his name? Van Damme or something. Is that his name? Somebody Van Damme. I don't like him either. I'm particular about actors that I like and don't like, I think. Quite particular. I like this cap up mortem, it's such a lovely colour. It's like it's got like a ready plum kind of feel to it. But I think that's a really nice colour for this nails body. So I think this will probably be in two parts, guys, because <laughs> this nail will be in two parts and then the bee will probably be in two two parts. There's so many elements to it, like the florals are just, even though it's a teeny tiny illustration, the florals on it are so detailed and so delicate that it, you know, that's where your time is being taken up. But that is really quite pretty. It's looking quite dark on, on camera, but it's like got nice tone to it for me. Now I'm going to use this sanguine again because I'm thinking that sang this sanguine will be nice for its little... Antennas, ten eye. What to call them? So light layer first, and then I think I'm gonna go in with the cap up mortem at the bottom, and then leave it sanguine at the top. So cap up mortem again from the bottom, and sort of leave it light on the tips. We'll go back in with the sanguine and deepen up. Deepen up now. There we go, so that's our snail at the bottom. Da, da, da. Now, the floral, I've been thinking about this. <laughs> I've been thinking, I've been pondering, I've been procratizing. What's that word? 
and I really still don't know what colour, but I'm just going to go for it. I'm not confident, but I'm just going to go for it because why not? So I thought a dark chrome yellow. Oh, don't tap your pencil on the page. Dark chrome yellow and I thought middle pur purple pink. And I thought maybe the pink on the tips and the yellow in the middle. We're just going to roll with it. I'm just going to roll with it and we're going to do this for the two biggest flavours so the, these ones so first i'm just going to base it all in a very light layer of the dark chrome yellow one for you one end so we're just going to base it all with a light layer just get rid of all that white space get all the white space out of the way and then you feel better i think that's part of the petal there isn't it yep <gasps> my belly's rumbling we can't hear that that was really loud, Bob. And we may as well do this second flower as well. Let's just get that colour down. Let's make it look less scary. Less scary there now. The middle. Hmm, what colour should we do the middle? So the tips of these are going to be purple. I really don't know what colour. Right, well, let's just do a light layer of yellow all over it. And then I can decide after. Let's just get our middle purple pink down first. So middle purple pink, one, two, five. I'm going to go on the edges. So you can use a medium to hard pressure for this. I'm going to get that colour down on the edge with a medium head to pressure. And then as we come towards the middle, we're going to use small circular motions. We're going to ease off the pressure. We're going to do light pressure as we come towards the centre. And then again, we can either burnish with our burnishing pencil or we can leave it textured or we can go back in with our dark chrome yellow. So I'm going to leave mine textured, I think. I think this one, I'm going to have it a textured piece. <laughs> I am. I feel like I always burnish everything. I'm going to have this one nice and textured. So same thing on every single petal. We're going to go in with a medium to hard pressure. And then as we drag it through to the centre, we're going to ease off into a light pressure and just get them small circular motions in until it's sort of blending nicely. I really love doing this with flowers. Anyone else love colouring flowers? I find it mindless because you're just doing the same thing over and over on each petal and you don't have to think. Once you've picked out your colours, you then don't have to think about what colours you're using you're doing the same thing over and over with the same colours it, it is quite mindless you could sit watching the tv doing this couldn't you good very good let me move that pencil it's in my way so yeah same thing all around and whilst i'm doing this i can think about what colour i want to do the other flowers <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be picking out pencils till Christmas. But I think the fact that we use Caput Mortem on the actual slug's body goes really nice with this sort of pinky purple colour as well. I think. Now, I quite like the delicateness of the pale yellow underneath. But if you wanted it to be bright and bold, you can burnish with your dark chrome yellow and it'll, it will make it really, really bright and punchy. So it's completely up to you. I would let you do what, what you want to do on that one. You can follow along with me religiously or you can just sort of get inspiration and then do your own sort of thing. <gasps> My belly's crumbling really madly. it's nice to put your own stamp on things sometimes you might think oh I wouldn't I wouldn't do it like that and that's fine you can take what you want from these videos and leave what you don't want Oh, I'm loving the texture. I'm glad I'm not I'm not gonna burnish this. I love the texture, especially with something like florals. I 
just gives it a nice finish I think and I think I'm going to use this middle purple pink as well um, in the centre and I'm going to do just a hard pressure just a block colour of it just going to do a block colour in the middle just felt compelled to do that so that's what I'm doing <laughs> I'm glad anyway that I had this bad cold last week and not on the run up to Christmas because yeah I've got lots to do now. I've almost got everything for the kids. Almost everything. There's probably about three or four things that I need to buy off the list. Um, But then it's the wrapping game. <laughs> That's the worst thing isn't it? The wrapping. Oh the wrapping. See I like to get everything out. And just have a look what the pals look like because you know when you have five kids they don't understand the concept of money so they're just looking at what the piles look like and if someone's pile looks massively bigger than somebody else's pile then they're looking a bit sus like oh they've got more than me or maybe that's just me subconsciously worrying that that's what they'll think but they don't really bother Maybe they're not bothered. Maybe they don't care. <laughs> Who knows? Oh my gosh, my Bella. I bet the microphone picked that up then. That was a grill and a half. <laughs> I ain't gonna do this. This um this flower now, so exactly the same. We're gonna do it exactly the same. So deeper on the edge. Making it lighter in the middle. I could even do these ones back to front. So instead of purple on the edge, I could do purple on the inside. Yellow on the edge, maybe make them, them ones a bit bolder. Bolder with the yellow. I don't know. Because then we've got these little teeny tiny flowers here. And then we've obviously got the leaves. Now the leaves, and well I'll see what it looks like after I've coloured all the florals, but the leaves, they don't have to be green guys. I mean I probably will do them green, but they don't have to be green. If you think about leaves in autumn, there's reds, yellows, oranges, browns. You can sort of use all those shades in leaves. They don't have to be green. So I'll see what I'll see what this looks like when I've finished and decide what I want to do. I think it's really easy colouring this book though, I love it. There's been like quite a few unfair reviews of this book on Amazon I think. And I put my review up because I thought, I just think it's unfair that it's getting really you know a bit down on the stars on amazon because people haven't checked the dimensions before they bought the book like there's a lot of comments saying it's tiny i didn't think it'd be so small but you know it literally states that it's a pocket size coloring book and the dimensions are in the description on amazon so that's not the fault of the artist that's just the person that hasn't checked properly so there was a fair, um, fair, a fair few unfair reviews i think so if anyone's bought this book and they haven't put a review on amazon yet please go and and you'll love the book go and give her a nice nice little review over there like i say it won't be for everyone this book but I love it personally. I think it's the best book yet. <laughs> that's just because I don't have a lot of time. And for me, something that's pocket size, something that's smaller is is like a dream come true. Especially for colour alongs because I can very rarely do a colour along on the channel unless it's in about four or five parts if it's a regular size page because I am a slow colourist. I do like having a chat at the same time as colouring because I think sometimes people don't watch the colour alongs to colour along they watch them to 
you know, to come and have a casual chat to, or to have it in the background whilst they do their own colourings. I've just been doing some shopping as well. <laughs> Into my local frozen food shop to get, because I've already bought my turkey for Christmas Day that's in the freezer. I bought my pigs in blankets which is sausage, uh, bacon wrapped around sausage. Yeah, got that right. Um, I've got my Yorkshire puddings, I've got my gravy. So I went for my desserts to the frozen shop. So I've got a big chocolate cheesecake, I've got chocolate gatto, I've got galaxy chocolate caramel profiterole things <laughs> for my daughter, of course. Right, I'm going to do these ones now. I'm going to use the dark chrome yellow for the centre of these ones. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So dark chrome yellow ones here are nine. In the centre, hard pressure in all of these ones to start with. Yeah, but I went to the frozen food shop, got my desserts, and there was a really ignorant woman inside. Obviously, there was a bit of a queue, but it wasn't a massive queue, you know. It was just like standard for, to, for paying at the tills. And the man who was paying, um, to me, like, like having two children with autism, I can sort of spot when there's an additional need or, and he was an elderly gentleman, but you could tell he was maybe a bit vulnerable in one way or another. And he was just talking to the cashier and he was showing her his watch and his bracelet and, you know, just having a chat. And you could tell that, like, maybe he had additional need or maybe, you know, he lived on his own and didn't have anyone to talk to and he was just having a little chat. And there was this snotty woman behind me getting really high rate and really rude. And then she shouted at one of the other ladies who worked in the store. And she's like, are you going to open another till up? You can see what's going on down here. I know you can see from up there what's going on down here. You need to open another till up. You know, I'm saying it really ratty and horrible. And I thought there's just no need for that. And she was huffing and puffing at the fact that the man was talking to the um, cashier at the front of the till. And then... You know, they opened another till up for her and then she still wasn't happy. She was still giving it all the back chat and I just thought, there's just no need for it. You know, there's a lot of bad things going on in the world and you waiting five minutes to be served isn't the end of the world. There's no need to be nasty to people. So um, I finally got to check out and paid. And then, no, they try not to give you a receipt unless you ask for it because they're trying to save on paper and that. But I like to get my receipts. So I just said, can I have the receipt, please? And she says, oh, yeah, sorry, love. Sorry, love. She said, we've got a few new members of staff in today. Right, I'm just going to start with... We'll go in with middle purple pink first, but I'm going to do this on the coming from the inside rather than the outside. But I'm going to do... Go on, yeah. Do a light layer of dark chrome yellow first, and then I'll go in with that. So light layer of this all over. Yeah, but anyway, I got served and I said, can I have my receipt, please? She said, yeah, that's no problem. She said, she said, sorry, we've just got a few new members of staff in today, so it's a bit hectic. I said, oh, I said, it's no problem. I said, some people will complain over anything. And I said it purposely, so there's not a woman behind me to hear it. And know that I was talking about her. Because <laughs> I just thought, there's no need. These ladies at the checkout are being nice. They're serving you. You know, there's, no, there's just no need for rudeness. I just, you know, I can't. Sometimes I just don't like people. <laughs> I just don't. There's like no compassion or empathy for anyone. You could clearly tell the man talking to the lady at the front was just like, you know. <sighs> But yeah, whatever. That's why I don't like supermarkets. <laughs> right, so I've done that. Now I've stopped chatting on. I can probably concentrate now. So no middle purple pink one two five, and we're gonna take this in the centre. So it's gonna be yellow on the edges on this one. So I'm not gonna put a lot on here. Just gonna like that. Just little bits. And then on this one, I don't know, I don't know if I'll go back in with the yellow but darker on these ones. I think I should. I 
I've not decided yet. Let's just get this middle purple pink colour in and then I'll decide what I want to do with the rest of it. We'll have a look and see what's going on. <coughs> so there. Like I say, I don't like bringing too many colours into into things. I like it to be sort of a quite a limited palette. It makes it easier and more mindful to colour, but also not too busy in my head. With what pencils should we use? What colours should we use next? Because I'm bad enough at picking colours as it is. Let's spin you around. I need to get the, get a good angle on where I'm going with these colours. Tell you what though, it's done nothing but rain here. Like really bad rain. We did get a little bit of snow at one point as well. Let me just go over this bit a little bit. We got a little bit of snow at some point. Not much. Not quite enough to build a snowman. I don't think. I don't think it was. Oh, I'm liking the way this is looking anyway. And this snail is going to complement the bee because of the yellows. We're going to have sort of golden yellows in this when we finally do it. So it's going to be complementary to the snail up there at the top. Might even bring some purple pinks into the bee as well. Who knows? All right, so we've got this last little floral to do now. Colour down there. And I've not really done anything yet with these little circles around this flower. I'm umming and ahhing, so I'm going to leave it till last. And then what I might do with it is I'll either just leave it or I will bring in sort of a glitter gel pen right at the end. But I'm not going to do that now because I always stick my hand in gel pens and smudge them. So, you know. I'm going to leave that bit for now, <laughs> just so you know. I love my Polychromos pencils though. I recommend them to anyone. People say, what's your favourite pencil? Polly's. No one's ever topped it. It's things that have come close or, you know, I really like the Derwent Chromaflow pencils. But they don't come close to the Polly's. The Polly's are just like... Wow, <laughs> I absolutely love them. So now I think we need to get a bit of, I don't know, should we go? I'm looking at it thinking, should I do these small flowers lilac? Or yellow with a bit of lilac? Let me see what colour I've got. It's teeny tiny my pencil that I'm on about using. Let me show you. Look at this. So this is the colour I was thinking, but with this bright yellow as well. Should we just go for it? Let's just go for it. So this one is the Cadmium Yellow 107. And this one is Light Magenta 119. I can remember the colour. <laughs> so again, starting off with a light layer of Cadmium Yellow 107. We're going to go over all these teeny tiny little florals. Even in the centre as well. So we're going to map out all our little florals that we're going to be colouring. So there's a patch there and then we've got a patch down here. I think the leaves going up there. So just be careful of where 
your leaves and petals there. There's a fine line here. I'm not sure if that's a. I think that's a flower. If I'm honest. Let me double check I've got them all. I think I have. So now I'm going to go in with this very tiny pencil that's probably going to hurt my hand. But light magenta 119. And again, I'm going to pop a little bit of this coming from the centre. So like that, so that it's, you're keeping the yellow on the end on these ones. Oh, this pencil. It's teeny tiny. The illustrations are teeny tiny. So if my big hand gets in the way, I apologise. But I am just leaving a teeny tiny bit of the yellow on the tips of the petal. And that light magenta is mixing with that yellow and making this lovely sort of, I don't know, like an orangey pink colour. Like I say, if you want to burnish anything, I'm going to leave texture in this, in this particular page. But if you want to burnish anything, feel free. move on to the top oh my well about my big hand's gonna get in the way here so just ignore it if it does let's carry on doing what we was doing on the other flowers which was just a bit of this in the center There's little areas as well inside this snail where you could either leave them white or you could go in with a bit of sort of earthy type colour to fill it in at the end. Not decided what I'm doing with that yet. Let's colour everything else. Let's colour all the leaves. <laughs> so I'm going to go in for quite earthy greens on the leaves. So let me have a look. I like earthy colours. I don't like the bright lime type greens. I like the really, yeah, the only word I can use is earthy to describe the colours I like. So I think I've got one pencil. This is, I don't know what word it is in, betwe in between at the start of this because it's been obviously sharpened out, but it's green opaque, I think it might be chromium green opaque or chrome no it might be chromium green opaque but it's 174 and let's try what colour them no that's the chrome oxide green there and chrome oxide green 278 so i'm going to go in with this one first 174 and then the 278 so light layer of this one I'm not going to do these ones with this colour. I'm going to do those a different colour. So we're just going in on the ones that I'm colouring at the minute. Light layer as usual. I'll go in on those little ones there. Has any of you ever completed a colouring book? Like the whole colouring book? 
I've completed two colouring books, but they've been the ones that haven't got many pages in them. So, the, you know, the Coleridge Wild books that only have 14 illustrations. I've completed two of those because it's just like 14 pages, but I've not actually completed, you know, a full sized colouring book. It's my dream. <laughs> it's my dream to do it. Maybe I'll do it with this one. It's a tiny enough book, isn't it? It's a tiny enough book, you know. Right, so that's all based in that. And then we're going to go in with chrome oxide green 278 and I'm going to do darker at the bottom and then pull up the colour. I think there's someone at my door. If the doorbell goes, I'll have to run to the door. Otherwise it'll just be the postman posting somewhere to me. I didn't know the doorbell's not rang. I hope it's not that postman that doesn't like ringing the doorbell. He literally does the quietest knock on the door because he doesn't want the ring doorbell to look at him. You know how people are shy of the ring doorbells? He literally will never press it. <laughs> I'm curious now because I didn't hear anything come through the door. There's always a chance it could have been a big lorry or a double decker bus that has set it off because sometimes when they go past it does set it off the motion on it. So like I've done with the flowers, I'm leaving the texture. In these leaves if you don't want to you don't have to but I'm leaving the texture so I'm not going to burnish the tops of these leaves I'm just going to leave them because I just think it looks really pretty like that do you not think when you get such a dark green like this it just makes everything pop this is one of my favourite greens in the poly set. I also like the earth green, that's a really nice green as well. Much prefer these deeper greens over the really bright, garish greens. But I will probably end up using a light green on these ones, these little ones, just to bring a bit of difference to the page, I think. Does anybody like to play board games on Christmas Day? Keep talking about Christmas, don't I? It's exciting now. It's not that long away. We've got Uno. I've bought Twister for my daughter. Because um, she loves that game. <laughs> Good old Twister. I'm thinking about getting Jenga because they like that as well. And with them being all, you know, sort of a range of ages, my kids, it's nice to have a game like Jenga or Uno where everyone can play it. It's sort of a broad age range on those games, isn't it? And it doesn't cause too many arguments. <laughs> there's just some games where you just know there's going to be a war. Or oh, someone won't understand how to play. There's my eldest is 15 and my youngest is 6. Well, he's not quite 6, he's almost 6. It'll be six on the 27th for December. So it's all fun and games in our house. I have to make sure that I've bought him Christmas presents and a separate birthday present. And a birthday card. And a birthday cake. <laughs> it's hard work. And then my partner's is on the 29th for December. So it's like Christmas Day. Then two days later it's my son's birthday. Then two days after that is my partner's birthday. 
But my son was, his due date was New Year's Day. It was actually it's supposed to be the 1st of January. But it came on the 27th of December. It was all that wrapping and lugging everything around Christmas Eve that brought on my labour. <laughs> it's funny because my grandma joked about it. When she saw me on Christmas Day, she was like, oh, you're going to go bending down like that. Because obviously Christmas Day, all the kids are opening the presents. I'm picking up wrapping paper. I'm doing this, that, and the oven creaking. And she's like, oh, you're not going to last. <laughs> Showing off two days later. But my partner's nephew's missus is due. Um, to be induced on the 26th of December this year. I said, oh, she might share a birthday with her, Casper. Oh, he should have said, because she's having a boy. I've got nativity on Wednesday as well. My little boy's nativity. There's only my little boy does it now, because it's only the infant children that do it. The juniors don't do it. The juniors do the um, carol service instead. Oh, it's looking nice this. It has taken me a small lifetime though to do it. <clears throat> but I have like, I've had like, how long have I done it? I don't, have I had off? Oh my gosh, get your words out Kirsty. Get your words out. I think the last time I filmed was was it two weeks ago? I'm sure it was two weeks ago. So I'm a little out of touch with the colouring and talking at the same time. I tend to talk too much. But we all love a good natter, don't we? Oh, I've got some sweets as well from... Does anybody else get lost on TikTok shop? Like... Oh, you can just be scrolling and scrolling and then you'll see something on TikTok shop and you're like, ooh, I'll, I'll have some of that. Oh, I'll have some of that. Well, we always have treats on New Year's Eve. And um, I came across one of those stores on TikTok where they import American sweets, Japanese sweets, all the different sweets. So obviously being here in the UK, I had to get some Jolly Ranchers because we don't have them over here. They are American sweets. So I got them some Jolly Ranchers. I got some, are they called Moon Pies? Because we don't have anything like that over here as well. I got some Moon Pies. And then I got some, they look like um, Pop-Tarts, but they're not Pop-Tarts. They're called Toast, Toastums or Toast something in the S'mores. And I was like, oh, they'll love them. I'm getting some of them. So I got some of them. I got loads of different like sweets and things and I got some imported Pringle flavours you know Pringles crisp so I got pizza flavour I got ranch I got buffalo ranch oh they best be nice <laughs> they better be nice that's all I'm saying so I am going to go in with a lighter green now I'm going to go in with lighter greens for these little bits so light green 171 light layer for these little leaves so yeah, if you're in America and you've tried all these things and you've tried the Pringle flavours, let me know what they're like. Please don't tell me they're disgusting, because I might cry. I also ordered something from India. There was an Indian toffee and it was like Milky, Milky Bear Chew or something it was called. I was like, oh, that looks nice. And what else have we got? Oreo tails or something or cow tails. Coattails, what the? I ordered some of them. I was like, what are they? <laughs> Permanent green olive 167 now on these ones. So, same thing again, leaving it lighter green on the edge. Yeah, so I just fancy to change. You know, when you just. You want some treats, but you're not sure what treats because you always buy the same thing and you're a bit bored of it. I thought, well, it's always the same, same old, same old. So I thought, what can be different? I don't know, some American imported sweets, some from India. And yeah, wherever else, not quite sure. 
The only thing is you pay through the odds for it, don't you? I think the Pringles flavours was was the three ninety nine. I think there was three pen ninety nine. So now I think oh should I do a bit for a background? See, I don't know whether I want to do a bit of a background now. You know where we've got this white space in between? I don't know whether to get the earth green. Because it's really quite nice. Yeah, I'll pop a bit of it in. Why not? So earth green 172. I'm just going to use a very light layer to go in between. Maybe medium pressure. To go in between all this white space. And then we'll do some white gel pen detailing in, I think. So I'm obviously filling up the centre first where it's all that, all that white. Does this bit up here? In between all these little teeny tiny flowers. In a minute, let's do the biggest part first. Yeah, I think it's nicer to get rid of the white space. So if my big hand's in the way, just know that you're going into all the white areas with this earth green now. And then I think I'm going to drag out a bit of the colour around the outsides. So I'm going to drag a little bit, not too much, but I'm just going to drag it out. So from, from the leaves, we're going to drag a little bit to the outsides. So we've got this bit of a green aura going on around the edge. I'm going to spin it around a little bit. Now if you wanted to then get your white pencil or a blender pencil and soften the edges of where you've pulled this cover up, colour up, you can do that. I might do that in a minute. Let's just get it all pulled up and then I'll have a look what it looks like. Still in frame here. Right, spin your back round again. I think I'm just gonna dive. Where was it? Where I saw in the camera there. Just here, deepen up there a little bit, and then move on to over here. There we go. So you can either leave it like that or you can get your white pencil and just soften the edges, which I might do if I can find my white. If I can't, I'll leave it. <laughs> Let's find the white, make sure it's clean. And I'm just going to very gently just go on along all the edges. This is white 101. You can use any white. They're all the same. Or a blender pencil if you prefer to use a blender pencil. Oh, 
spin this around a little bit. That earth green is such a lovely colour. Need to order another one. It's getting too small because I love it. <laughs> it is, it's getting too small. I think I've pulled a bit of that Snell's colour over there then. Let me see if I can erase that. It's only the tiniest little dot, but it will irritate me. There's like a teeny tiny bit of brown there. Let's dust it off. Go back in with our white. And there we go. So then if you want to put any gel pen in the centre on these little, you know, these little circle bits, going round I'm going to find one of my gel pens so I'm going to use a gold I think I think I'll use a gold if it still works let me check it works and this one's mm, do I want to use that I'm not sure if I do now now I might use my Posca my gold no I'm very indecisive I apologize now I'm going to use the flare glitter so mine there's only a little tiny bit left in it but it's a it's a gold glitter pen and I'm going to use that in the centre just for a bit of sparkle I was going to use a pink but then I changed my mind because I thought it'll just get lost in the flower if it's too much pinky purple I feel like it needs a yellow or gold No, that's nice. I might even use this in the centre of those other petals. So do you know these petals here? These flowers here, even, not petals. I'm going to use it in the centre of those. Because why not? The flow on this is a bit rubbish now because it's really not much ink left in this one, to be honest. And then I'm just going to pop in a little bit of white gel pen dotting and tailing in. And then we're done with this one. So we have done it in an hour. Wow. Wow. Proud of myself now. So where should we put the dotting? I think I'm going to follow. If you look very closely, you can see where Johanna Basford's put sort of black dotting detailing around. I'm going to go over that with the white. So wherever she's put sort of, if it'll get going. Come on, white gel pen. Where she's put the black dot in detail in it, I'm going to follow it with my white. So that makes even less guesswork. You can just sort of pop that in where she has, or even put some extras in. You can do big circles and small circles, or all the size, same size circles, doesn't really matter. And there we go and then I'll add some to the leaves I think just to brighten up the leaves so we'll just put some little dots all over the leaf area I'm not going to put any on the petals I don't think at this minute in time On the bigger leaves, I like to do sort of a bigger dot and then smaller dots after it. more leaves to go and then we're almost done we've almost 
almost done. And there we go. Have I got every single leaf there? I think we have. Let's just put one there because I'm getting happy with this gel pen now. <laughs> That's me all over. I'm like, all right, gel pen. Dot in detail, dot, dot, dot. I have to calm myself down and tell myself to stop. So that is it. That's where we're, we are with that. So I'm going to pull the camera up a bit now. Oh, I like that. I can get that horrid glare off it now as well. So similar colours are going to be on this one when I come round to this one. But the whole of this body is going to be like really nice yellows and you know the is it called green gold the color yeah green gold i'm going to bring that into the center of this and then the wings are going to be same colors of the florals that we've done here so it's going to be all golden here and then pinky purples there maybe bringing in a bit of the slug color that we've used on the head maybe or somewhere maybe the bottom Maybe the bottom bit and the head bit and then this bit golden or something like that. But anyway, <laughs> so there we go. I hope you've enjoyed um, following along with this or just listening to the chat and watching me colour. Please do, don't forget to hit that big thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you're new and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye bye.